programming a DCC decoder to run just like one of these? Coming up. Hi SC fans, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Tim Garland and I'm a locomotive engineer for Norfolk Southern. One thing I've always wanted to do is get my models to run more like the prototype. So keep watching and I'll show you how I program an ESU low sound decoder equipped Scale Trains SD40-2 to run just like this one. Before we get started I'll show some things that I use when I'm programming my locomotives. First up. I use NCE for my DCC system simply for its ease of use and that it supports advanced con system. Also the proto throttle from Iowa Scale Engineering is super easy to use in, in, with an NCE system. The AccuTrack speedometer is a must for me when I'm setting up programming on my locomotives to get accurate speeds. That Scale Trains ESU decoder equipped locomotive is great. All locomotives on the Seaboard Central have ESU decoders. One thing I like about the scale trains is they come with a version 5 decoder. Also keep a clipboard with a pen and paper to make some notes. Here's the rest of the things that I use for programming. I've got an old laptop that I keep uh, just for programming purposes. The load programmer itself which is connected to a dedicated programming track that you see the engine on. And I also have a, a spiral bound notebook where I keep notes on all my engines and the differences in between for each one. Alright let's get started. One of the first things I do is download a new sound file if I have more than one of the same kind of unit. And so I go to the ESU website, I find sound files. This engine's equipped with a low sound version 5 decoder. I want to go here and I want to search for an EMD 16 cylinder 645. Now this particular one on this uh, engine has been downloaded with this uh, 645 E3B late exhaust. So I simply downloaded that one and then we'll go to the look programmer next. All right, after I downloaded the new sound file and uploaded it into the locomotive, now I want to modify that uh, decoder. So I go to modify it, and it's going to read the data on the decoder, and it's going to come back with me with the current settings. Now here you can see I've changed it to the long address, 3235. I've also selected F5, F6, F7, and F8 so that those functions will activate when uh, the engine is run in a consist. So the trailing units all will do the same thing as the lead unit. I go over to brake settings next, scroll down to the bottom, and I want to adjust brake function 1 to 51 or 20 percent, brake function 2 to 85 or 33.33 percent, .33 and brake function 3 to 102 or 40 percent. This uh, gives me realistic brake settings for a locomotive. Next, driving characteristics. At the very top for an EMD second generation unit I want 25 seconds to reach maximum speed so that number here on a version 5 is 28. I also will max out the brake time to 255 this allows me to coast and use the independent brake feature. The next screen is function mapping and this is the one that will take the longest to do. On F0, that's the front headlight, you want to uh, ignore the direction. F1 is the bell, F2 is the horn, F3 is the front headlight dimmer. F4 is the di front ditch lights, F5 is drive hold, F6 is the independent brake feature, and I activate brake 1, brake 2, and brake 3 in the function. And this allows me to use that brake 
on the proto throttle like a real locomotive. F7 is the dynamic brake and F8 you see a lot of things going on on F8. I also included the flange squeal and I have it adjusted down to only 10% so it's very light it's not overwhelming. F9 is a coupler feature F10 is a rear headlight, F11 is rear headlight dimmer, F12 is rear ditch lights, F13 handbrake, F14 is radiator fan. Next I go to function output. This is where I can find out which auxiliary functions are those ditch lights and they're different depending on which uh, sound file you use so you have to figure that out. Next, function settings, scroll down to the bottom, change the triggered function from F11 to F14 because this is uh, your random sounds and I want that radiator fan to be active randomly. All right, next is motor settings. I want to use this speed curve and here is how I, I adjust these motor settings and I will show you they're different depending on the locomotive but I'll show you a baseline and how I adjust them using that AccuTrack speedometer. Basically what I want is by the time I hit F, uh, speed step 16 I want it maxed out at 18 miles per hour and I want speed step 1 to equal 1 mile an hour. So the first thing I need to do is find the minimum speed uh, that it's required for it to um, speed step one to equal one mile an hour and I need to find the maximum speed where it will equal 18 miles per hour. Sound slot settings you can adjust uh, those different uh, sounds for instance the horn volume um, I want them that up pretty high because horns are overwhelming on the real locomotive. Flange squeal you can see I've got it pretty low. Here it's set at 15. So this is what I've got. Once I've done all this I go up here to this tab right here. I write the decoder data. It will override it and it will load everything up into the locomotive. I can check to make sure everything's working okay by going to the driver's cab. If it comes on, it's working. Once I uh, have everything set up the way I like it, I'll go to file. I want to save this project and this particular one is the NS3235 and I'll save it. It'll ask me, it already exists, I want to replace it, yes. And each time I update this file, I'll uh, save it again. All right, now with the locomotive on the layout, we're going to check the each speed step. And I have, keep a clipboard, and you can see I have the speed steps marked, the value for each speed step, my target speed, and my actual speed. And I keep working from this worksheet until I get it to where I want it. And you can see these target speeds I have for each speed step. But before we do that, we need to check the minimum speed and the maximum speed. So with the, my NCE controller, I want to go to speed step 1. And we'll watch the locomotive as it enters the AccuTrack speedometer and registers a speed. So here I want one mile per hour in speed step one. And doing all this work really pays off in the long run. It does take some time and you have to keep going back and forth back to the programmer but you can see 1.1 and that's good. All right, now I'm going to check the maximum speed. So here I'm going to put it all the way up to speed step number 28 and we'll see what it registers as.
My goal is 18 miles per hour. There we go. Now that I got the minimum and the maximum speed set, I'm going to adjust the next speed steps with the proto throttle. And here I have each notch and what their target speeds are. And I check both directions, forward and reverse. The actual speeds, and then I can adjust the speed steps because I want to hit these certain speeds for these particular notches. So for instance, let's go to notch number one. I want it to be doing two and a half miles an hour in notch number one. There we go, 2.5. Alright, notch number four, I want it, the engine to be doing 10 miles per hour. And this, as you can see, it's loading up just like a real locomotive. There we go, 10. Now let's do notch number eight. All the way to eight. Should be doing 18 miles per hour in notch number eight. Right on the money. So to recap, here's what I've, the notes I have in my spiral bound notebook on the 3235. I show what each function uh, setting is, the brake values, acceleration, the deceleration, driving characteristics, motor settings, you can pause the video and you can look and see what I have the value for each setting and the corresponding speed for each setting also the notch and the speeds for each notch so in conclusion I hope that you have enjoyed this and learned something from it and hopefully it'll make your model trains run more like the prototype if you enjoyed this video on the Seaboard Central, I appreciate a thumbs up. This helps the video show up on other people's feeds so they may find the channel. And if you're not already a subscriber, I'd invite you to join. And be sure to hit that bell for future notifications. Until next time, I'm Tim Garland, and thank you for watching the Seaboard Central.